Rahele Gomez is professor of astrophysics at Cardiff University. I asked her what is so significant about the methane liquid oxygen rocket. The key features of a liquid a methane and liquid oxygen rocket is that it was basically deemed to be future technology. So this is a rocket fuel that is replacing our old traditional rocket fuel where we use kerosene, where we use liquid, nit uh, liquid hydrogen along with oxygen. And it completely changes the whole landscape of space exploration because we're now able to use a rocket fuel that is cheaper and easier to come by. And so having a, a, a rocket that has been not only launched into space, but also is at a stable orbit around the Earth is revolutionary. Uh, and it really shows us that the technology that has long been thought of, this, this methane oxygen technology that everybody across the globe is trying to get to work, is no longer the future, but is actually now the current. We are now in an in a era of having cheaper, more sustainable, and more efficient rockets. And I think we will look back on this in, in the future and think, okay, this is when it changed. This is when space exploration became from the 10 billion or so pounds per, per rocket launch to under the billion mark, potentially even cheaper than that. And that will really revolutionize the way that we, we view space, the way that we collect data, the way that we send people out to, to explore. Mm -hmm. So methane is considered a less polluting, safer and cheaper propellant. So how does Landspace, a private Chinese company, plan to capitalize on these advantages and incorporate reusability into the future launch? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, uh, and as you said, the, the methane is very abundant. It's industrially um, uh, available, so people can use it. Uh, people can get hold of it. And it's very, it's very cheap. It works much more efficiently. So you can, and also you can squeeze it into smaller bits of space. It can work at higher pressures than, than the current uh, fuels. So all of this makes your rocket launch cheaper and safer. And particularly, it's less toxic to humans. So I suspect that land space will, will, will use this technology um, to get people out into space, so potentially onto the moon. And I, I suspect that the goal would be ultimately Mars. And again, this technology allows you to start to think that could be a reality before um, the old fashioned way of having rocket fuel. You'd have to have a huge, huge rockets, a uh, huge engine, a huge engine, complex system uh, with methane and oxygen. You can have a very simple, small engine that doesn't weigh very much. Mm -hmm. So all of these things to me suggest that land space will focus on human travel ultimately. And they will need to capitalize on this by making it as cheap as possible. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, that will only happen if they can demonstrate this technology is reusable. And so what I mean by that is that the engines themselves need to be reusable and ultimately the rockets. Because otherwise, if you're, if you're just sending one rocket up there with four engines and you have to start from scratch, it becomes very expensive. Is if they can reuse the engines, then then they bring that cost down, and that would then allow them, as a private company, to potentially look at um, you know making money, being being cost effective.